Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about uh, fundamental concepts of software testing and continuing with our chapter five, which is to talk about the test management. Looking forward to extend furthermore on 5.4, which is risk management. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be giving you examples of what is project risk and what are product risk. In continuation to our previous tutorial where we just got a quick insight about what exactly risk is and how exactly risk can be mitigated with help of testing. But before we start understanding those sort of concepts in a little deeper dive, we would like to understand some quick examples of what is basically a project risk and how it is different from product risk, right? And the very first thing we are starting with today is the examples of project risk. As defined earlier, project risk is anything which impacts your process of making the product, right? The process, the project is all about the several activities which you generally perform in order to complete a end product. And there are a number of activities, there are a number of tasks which are performed in order to make sure that everything is in place, readily available at the right point of time and you can perform your necessary tasks and activities to complete the project on or before the timeline. Now, if anything gets deviated or anything is anticipated to be uh, getting deviated in future is what you call it as a project risk. So any, any risk which is associated with the activities or the task which you perform as a part of the process is what you can refer to as project risk. Look at some of the examples here. When you talk about the project issues directly, uh, delays may occur in delivery, task operations, uh, completions, etc. Inaccurate estimates being calculated by the managers. You may have anticipated that this particular work may take only two weeks of time, but when the team started working on it, you realize that it's not a job of two weeks, right? You may need some more time. So these all contribute to the project risk, which could initiate a crack as a deviation to the project timelines and could result into big impacts too. Also, late changes may result in substantial rework. For example, there are a few changes which has to happen at earlier phases of the life cycle where you know you understand what kind of changes uh, needs to further be applied. But for example, if you have followed the requirement, created the design, and after designing, when you start with the implementation, you realize that there's a change in the requirement. <laughs> now, that certainly requires a lot of rework to be performed and that is also not recommended, right? So that could also turn into a risk for your project and we never want to have such kind of things. So you can actually prevent risk, you can even mitigate if it happens, but none of our business at this point of time, we're just getting started with learning fundamentals. So slowly, gradually, you will understand everything that how to deal with them. The other categorization here is from the organizational factors. For example, if you do, do have a team who is not skilled with the technology which you're supposed to work upon and uh, there are no proper training provided to the team or people are quitting the job during the critical time of the project is all another contribution to the project risk. Personal issues like people having conflict within themselves, not having proper communication, uh, you know, people are not tolerant of each other could also result into a project risk users, business staff, or any other specific personality of your project is not available when you need them the most is another important example of project risk. Adding further more examples from the technical point of view, that is writing requirements is equally important in the way it should be understood by the team. So requirements may not be defined well enough. The requirements may not be met uh, given existing constraints could be challenges of the environment, the language, etc. The test environment may not be ready on time to start execution, so could cause a delay in your execution, right? Data conversion migrations and their tool support may be late in the life cycle. Poor defect management and similar problems may result in accumulating a lot of defects and other technical depths, right? So there are a lot of such things which are being performed as a part of your process. All we want to tell you that Anything getting deviated is a risk for the project. It would result into non-completion of the project or maybe in a kind of suspension of the project or even termination. Also to add from external sources where we are talking about the supplier issues, we are certainly talking about 
people who are uh, contributing from an external source. For example, when you talk about the tool, you talk about the environment, you heavily rely on external vendors and you look forward to uh, you know, get a lot of tools from them. What if they don't have proper support? What if they don't have the integrations given to you in the way you wanted it? So when you take external help, you take tools from some vendors to use in your project, you need proper support, their availability to assist you. Or when you get some of your work done by another company, you need to make sure that your work and their work are in sync and it's going to fit together at some point of time, right? So all these are one of the other contributor to the project risk. Now, again, we're just talking about the simple examples to give you an idea and insight that what exactly project risk could be. On the other hand, we're also giving you quick examples to the product risk. Of course, uh, as defined earlier in our previous tutorial, these are the risk which happens uh, related to the quality characteristics or functionality, right? Functionality is the core behavior of the application. For example, if I'm unable to send money using a banking application, then that product has a risk. And of course, it the risk is that the product will fail into the market, people will stop using application which you have developed, right? So that's the core functionality and on the same way, the non-functional characteristics like performance, usability, accessibility, or security are also key characteristics which determines the uh, product risk at any point of time, right? You know, performance is poor, people will stop using your product, you're, you think your data is not secured, you have no security certificates associated with your portal or applications, you do not give people a privacy to you know hide their information. So all this sort of thing can result into product risk. And these things are observed by the end user in the real world. So we anticipate these kind of deviations or risk and try to mitigate them through a, a lot of testing which we perform. Some of the examples we are listing here is uh, like software might not perform its intended function according to the specification. What was the requirement and you are not able to fulfill them. Software might not perform its intended function according to the user or customer or stakeholder needs. That means it might be doing a fundamental job, what it is supposed to do, but it the customer had something different and specific. Very simple example, like a name field should accept only characters. Everyone knows that. But the customer wanted to accept characters up to 10 characters alone. So you just can't make it 20 characters, right? So that could also be a problem. Like people don't accept the first name, last name, middle name, and sort of thing. So I can say that functionality is working fine, but not as per the customer's expectations. The system architecture may not be supported for some non-functional requirements. So that's another challenge which we may see. Talking about particular computation algorithms where computation is more about converting one metric to another metric, one unit to another unit, like converting your currencies from you know one currency to another currency. Uh, so that could be also one of the examples which can really lead into a product failure. Poor data integrity where you look forward to integrate different applications together. For example, Amazon integrated with uh, a lot of payment gateways to allow you to make payment through Master, Visa, Amex, Diners, and net banking, etc. What if their integrations are not appropriate? You may not be able to pay through those gateways, right? And you may stop using Amazon because of that, <laughs> right? Also, response times for certain key characteristics, like, you know, when you talk about the non-functional parameters, like performance, this could be another important thing to be taken into account. Well, we just wanted to give you quick insights about different examples of project and product risk to give you an idea that what exactly it may look like and how you can determine the difference between a project and product risk. But yes, a deep dive would need some time for sure. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.